welcome to Habits for Happiness, the show where we discuss habits you can employ in your daily life to make you happier. Here on Voice America Network today to talk about the habit of visualization is Jeff Patterson. Welcome, Jeff. Hi, lady. Hello. Hi. Great, great to be here. Oh, it's an honor to have you. Thank you. And for those of you who don't know, I'm Lady Fuller, a habits and success coach who helps clients drop limiting habits and adopt healthier habits like visualization to live a happier life. But first, let me introduce Jeff. He is a phenom, I should say. He really is an amazing person. And there's so much to you, Jeff, that this intro doesn't even do it. But our guest today, he has an innate gift for helping individuals unlock their true selves and unleash their, it in their lives. Since 1999, Jeff's been coaching a who's who of accomplished clients to even greater success. Centered on transforming challenges and character quirks into accelerators for true success, his coaching helps clients step beyond distraction to be who they came here to be and do what they came here to do. Wow. So here to share a life-changing idea from his new book, please welcome private coach Jeff Patterson. Welcome. Thank you, lady. Honored to be here. Excited. Yeah. So I'm excited and I'm so excited about your new book. So can you tell listeners first, like, tell us about the new book, what's happening with it? What's it called? What's it going to be about? <laughs> How can they find it? All of those things. Yeah. Well, that's so sweet of you to, to say that and to let me share it. Um, well, first of all, the title, it's, it's still a working title right up to the finish line. My set published date is the 5th of March, but the title right now is what's your big thing? Seven What's your keys. big thing? Okay. Go ahead. Yes. Seven What's keys. What's your big thing? Seven keys to unlock. I'll, I'll spit it all out and then I'll. Okay. Go, uh, okay. go so for it's, it. What, it's all right. That's no, okay. What's your big thing? Seven keys to unlock the game changer. So the book is really centered around the premise that everyone has within them at any given time, a big thing which is more than just a goal, more than just something that would be cool to do. It's something emerging from within you that deep down yearns to be realized. And through all points of my life, I've always had one. And I think most people can probably relate. And as we get older and life gets more full, it's easy to get distracted with all the responsibilities and important things that do need to get done. But sometimes we, we let the big thing, the thing that's most important to us slip to the bottom of the list. And this book is about clarifying your big thing, how to clarify it. And most importantly, uh, the seven keys that if they're done in, in uh, collaboration with each other will not just help you to realize your big thing, but it'll explode your level of fulfillment and performance in every area of your life. Wow, that sounds just amazing. And exactly what I think a lot of people are looking for, especially in this sort of post COVID world, right? People are really looking for what is their big thing? What's been lying dormant in me? And how do I unleash it? Yeah. Yeah. You know, the, the times when I've struggled in my life have been when I have either out of fear, let go of my big thing, or the circumstances around seem so intense that I had to give up my big thing. And, um, you know, now after a number of years, it's, it's just been so apparent to me that what one of the big factors that keeps me juiced in life is, is always having that on the table as a project, not just I'm going to get to it someday or dabbling with it. It's changed my life and so many of my clients. So I'm super excited to you know, just to share this, this technology. It's, you know, the, the truth is, you know, people say, well, there's no, there's no new ideas. And, and I have to agree with that. They're just different ways of, of saying it. So I'm, I'm not pretending that what I'm saying is revolutionary. I think, you know, the idea that we all have a huge thing that we deep down want to do, I, I think people get already. But, um, but I think the way that you approach it and, and helps you to also pull your life into a balance as well. And we're in a phase, I think, in just evolution where we're all seeking to balance because we have so much hurling at us every second of every day. 
And it, it takes such fortitude to tune out distraction, but also to prioritize. And it's a constant thing. So this really, this for me is a way to really cut through to the heart of what's most important and let the other things really be lifted up by yeah. this endeavor. So question. So just a question about the big thing is, would you say life purpose and the big thing are similar? What's the relationship there? Well, your big thing is, is not just a goal. You know, it's mm. a mountaintop begging you to touch it. It's distinct from life purpose. I do okay. not consider those the same thing. Okay. Although I'll tell you that very often your life purpose is running through the heart of your big thing. Mm. But a so big awesome. thing, uh, right? It, it totally yeah, it's is. so awesome. It like totally resonates, right? This idea, yeah. just to repeat what you said that, you know, your life purpose is running through your big thing. Yeah. yeah. You know, for so much of my career but my life I've always been doing the thing that I yearn to do I've always been doing it as a little boy on the fields of our Nebraska farm in sports in high school and then in music and then you know become a professional professional actor in Hollywood and a number of careers shifting from there and then becoming a, a success coach in the late 90s and you know where I've been in my career ever since then have always really been doing the same thing, even with multiple different careers. So I really think our, our life purpose is, is in us. It's about discovering, it's about uncovering what's already there. You don't have to go, you know, manufacture it or try to put yourself into some. Right. It's bigger than a, it's bigger than a task. It's a way of being that's in us all, if we can uncover it. A way of being that's in us all. I love that. So can you tell listeners why did you choose the habit of visualization? And then maybe we can shift to how that relates to our big thing. Sure. Um, for me, I have I've always been a very visual person. And seeing things is more real to me than thinking about it. So it's something I've always done. It's probably why I eventually became a professional actor because I could see things. And, and I also realized later in life, I had a gift of seeing things, you know, beneath the surface, you know, just intellectually and psychologically as well as intuitively. But, um, but visualizing for me just pulls my mind and my emotions and all of me so much more quickly than any mental gymnastics can. So mm -hmm. it's really one of the, one of the most... Um, blue collar get to it practices for me that really puts me in a state you know of elevated thinking and performing so what's your habit of visualization how does that um, show up for you in your daily life is it something you do in the morning is it something you do every hour tell us more yeah well I mean this isn't necessarily from the book but it's it's I do whatever it takes. I mean, I have a number. I have a lot of different techniques that I do. And um, the one that I, I think is really simple that, that your listeners might, might enjoy is what I call my ideal day. And when I get up in the morning, I usually have my habit of spiritual ex exercises and meditation and exercise. And after that, um, I do visualization and what I'll do is my ideal day and I'll take my pen to my journal and I'll just write out exactly what I would like to have occur as if I'm in the scene itself, you know, like an actor in a movie. I just watch it unfold and I pay attention to what I see. I consciously put in my senses, like what I smell, what I hear, what I feel, the temperature, whatever will get my senses engaged. I'll do that. And so I'll just start writing and sometimes I'll do it for five minutes and put it away. Sometimes I'll go up for 30 minutes. I've gotten sucked into it because it was so really emotionally rich that I would do it for a much longer period of time and then go beyond the day, go to the ideal, you know, to my month and what I want to have occur before the end of the year. And then before, you know, before long, I'll be so excited, jacked up, you know, just with anticipation and the emotional experience of almost having done that. It's really yeah. the beauty of it. Oh, it's so awesome. I mean, you know, for all listeners that have listened to my shows, they know I'm a huge proponent of the morning routine. And I'm a, a Pal Elrod fan who has visualization as one of his proponents of the pillars of the morning routine. And so I've never quite heard it said 
like this exercise of the ideal day. And I think it's so awesome that you do this and that you have, I would assume clients do this and listeners can do this and that they can visualize how they want their ideal day that this day and maybe beyond to unfold. So how does that work out for you? Tell us how does the day unfold, you know, compared to your visualization? Does it matter? Well, I would say I don't do it specifically because I think that exact thing is going to um, Although, as it turns out, very often it does. Mm-hmm. And then uncanny things happen. Like, you know, I'll be writing and I'll get the idea that somebody's going to call me and I know them and they're going to be like, hey, I want to have you do this thing with me that I was really, and all this, you know, and then, you know, a couple hours later, that very thing happens. Um, it reminds me of, um, of a moment, there's a, a real, you know, blatant example of how what you write down can actually happen. If you, this is a quite a while, like I was going to say a few years ago, <laughs> let's call it decades. Um, <laughs> this would have been back in, you know, years ago when I was in Los Angeles, I was an actor in Hollywood and I was, I was working, but, but it was tight. And I remember I was feeling burnt. This was like the end of a year, tons of auditions. And I booked some jobs, but it was, it was tough. And I was just like, I, I've got no life. I'm not doing anything fun. All, all the people I graduated college with, they're out skiing, they're having fun with their friends and I'm here grinding it out. And I felt good about it. But at the same time, I was like, I'm missing out on my life. So I made this list of a hundred things that I, wanted to do. It wasn't a bucket list. I mean, there were teeny things. It was like, you know, eat ice cream or, you know, all kinds of things. But at the top of that list was going snow skiing. Mm. And I grew up on the plains of the Midwest and I did not snow ski growing up. So this was kind of like this romanticized idea. Anyway, I wrote it at the top of this list and I circled it and I just decided right there. I said, I'm going snow skiing. I'm, do- I'm doing it. And so I wrote it down and my phone rings. Um, and it's my old roommate, Mike. And so I chat with Mike briefly. And he said, what are you doing? I said, I'm going snow skiing. He's like, really, where are you going? I said, I have no idea yet, but I'm going on these dates and I'm going to be in Colorado on a job. So he's like, hold on, I got to go. So he goes, I pull out my journal. I start writing my ideal trip to Colorado. So I'm writing it down. I'm like on the ski lifts. I've got seven days. I'm having so much fun. There's great powder. I'm laughing. I'm, you know, and, and I'm having dinner with friends of which I couldn't afford. And, you know, I'm driving a new car up to the, to the slopes, which I didn't have, you know, all of this stuff. And I'm, I'm probably taking 30 minutes and writing it all down. Everything from the food to how it feels, to the fun I'm having, to how great I am on the skis and the ski, you know, gear that I have on is dialed in, of which I had not. And the phone rings again and it's Mike again. He's like, hey, you're all set. I said, what are you talking about? He's like, well, the dates you're going, my cousin works at Copper Mountain in Colorado. When you're on your gig, if you can get up there for the week after, I got you all set. Everything's taken care of. Like, whoa, this is incredible. So his cousin had lift tickets, the whole thing. So we get off the phone. I'm just amazed. I go back to my journal. And now I'm like, I've got some real, you know, facts to to weave in there. But I still didn't know how I was going to get up there. And I kid you not, like five minutes later, the phone rings. And it's the producer from the Nickelodeon show that I was hosting at the time. I was doing a show at the Pepsi Center in Denver. Um, and so he calls and says, Hey, how you doing? And I said, I'm great. I'm going skiing. And he's like, really, where are you going? And so I tell him and I tell him how it all had unfolded. I said, the only thing I don't know is how I'm going to get there. And he said, well, I know how you're going to get there. You take the, the production vehicle, just take it after the show and you can have it for the week. And I said, I couldn't ask you to do that. I can't pay for it. He's like, please, it'll be our birthday gift. So within a span of like 40 minutes and me writing this all down, every single thing unfolded to make it possible. Not only that, my roommate, Bob, walks in the door from work. He says, hey, Jeffy, what you doing? And of course, I said, I'm going skiing. He's like, really? He's like, do you have any gear? And I said, actually, that's the one thing I don't have. And he walks me over to the closet, which I'd actually never opened before. And he said, my mother, in her infinite wisdom, got me this. I'll never wear it. 
It's yours if you fit, you can fit into it. He opened it up. It was a total North Face, like pimped out, full on ski gear, gloves, jacket, bib overall, the whole thing. And uh, it was just the most uncanny thing. All the stuff I'd written down, the way was paved. And within a couple of months, I had that trip. It was for five days. I didn't pay for it. I mean, I, I helped out, but I mean, it was just all complimentary. It was insane. That is insane. And so did that start you sort of on this life of visualization or were you doing it before? No, that honestly, I've been doing that since I was a little kid, but I didn't write it down. Okay. Writing it down started living in LA just because I wrote things, you know, as part of my, the business. But um, the visualization has been with me since I was very, very young. But when it's written, it's real. Mm. This is one thing that I tell my clients It's not enough to just like think about it or kind of daydream about it. That's a great first step and that's awesome. But when you put it to paper, now it's a thing. It's a Mm -hmm. physical thing. You know, I know that from writing scripts in Hollywood, you know, it's everybody's got an idea. Everybody's got a great thought for a screenplay, but very few people get it down on paper and get a script. Same thing is true with visualization. When you write it down, there's something um, that happens. I'm sure there's science on this. But it takes so much focus and the act of putting it to the page, it changes things and it changes you too. And that's the thing that I love about it. And as a matter of fact, I'll make, I don't make lists. I make, I make bullet points of outcomes and experiences I would like to have. Wow. And, then I re- and I review those. I don't review my tasks that often. I review the results that I want and I see them, I experience them, I feel them. And when I get to the point where I can feel them, I know they're done. Wow. So this is big. So I want to just, just we're take two steps back. This first piece is that I've discussed visualization a ton in my work and also just in all the conversations I have with amazing people like you. And one of the things that's never been said is this idea of writing it down, right? So writing down what your visualization and, you know, letting the universe, God source yourself, whoever energy know that that is what your plan is somehow, um, you know, as you're saying, even makes it more real or the outcome more likely to happen, right? Yes. And then the second piece of this that I think is just completely amazing, and, and frankly, I think it's mind-blowing way to think, is instead of having a task list, which makes us all these sort of like doing bots, having this outcome list, right, of results that you say that you're feeling into as you, you know, are looking through the list and that when you feel into it to repeat what you've said, then you know that that outcome or result is done, right? There might be a period of time, this is an assumption that you're waiting for the outcome to, because we're, you're not in charge of the timeline, but that your, your desire for it, you're putting it out to the universe is complete. Is that correct? Yeah, I think that is, that, that is what I'm saying. Definitely on the outcome list for sure. And, you know, when I visualize, I, again, I'm not saying I do this all the time, every single day, but I, I do it a lot unconsciously, which is part of why I wanted to chat about it here. Cause I, cause I don't always um, share this in such a, you know, structured way. Um, it's, it's important not to get caught up. Like, I'm not saying write it down. So you got a copy and you're like, here's what it is. Although, <laughs> although that's great because, yeah. but I would say, write it down every day, fresh mm-hmm. and new, like an, as an exercise, mm-hmm. because that gets you thinking about it. Whatever I focus on expands and grows the reticular activating system in my brain, in your brain and all of our, all of the listeners brains right now, its job is to find stimuli that matches what we're focused on. So if I'm focused on this vision and I'm writing it down, I'm like obsessed about the vision and the outcomes, then it's, it's thinking of people to call, it's thinking of different things. And some of those crazy synchronicities are really just that part of our brain whose job it is to find the stimuli that matches our focus. Yeah, so it's like this, I say, really, yeah, go ahead, finish your thought. No, that was it. No, it's so it's this idea of like where your attention go, you, goes, your energy flows, right? So you might as well choose wisely. Yeah. Yeah. So for someone who's listening, who's thinking, this is totally amazing. I'm thinking this too, and doesn't have, you know, a a habit in their lives, a visualization, where would they start? Well, I would start with the ideal day, the one that I just mentioned, 
And I would, um, you know, it doesn't have to be in the morning. And it, it could be for your next day, you know, happening in your life, an event that you want to go well. You could do that. But I would pull out a piece of paper and a pen. And some people like to type, and I'm fine with that. But for me, there's magic in the written word. For some reason, I... Um, it just really works for me, but everybody's got their own thing. But let's just assume that it works great for okay. everybody to write it yeah. on paper. Um, just set a timer for 10 minutes, pull out the pen, and just start writing what you want to have occur. And you would ideally write this in first person, like I am now walking into the door of the interview, and the CEO is shaking my hand with the biggest happy eyes I've ever seen. And they're like, we're so excited you're here. We can't believe you even took the interview. Like you, you see it the way you would love to. It's almost, it takes work even because sometimes your mind's going to jump in and go, that's not real. That's not going to happen. That'll never happen. Yeah. And change the tense, I would think too, writing to like write in present tense is also an, a skill. Sure. Yeah, it is. It takes, it takes some practice and it's okay if you do it in a different tense too. That's mm -hmm. better than okay. not doing it, but, but, but challenge yourself to write it in I am first person present tense. And just see it unfold the way you want to. And you might start to write it in a very, oh, but then they said no. You know, it's it's funny. Like I'll catch myself and start writing and I'll start dumbing down the vision while I'm writing. Just be the natural mind's tendency that wants to play small or it doesn't think that's really possible. It tries to play it safe. And this is because when it's written, I can direct myself while I'm writing. I'm like, no, make this bigger. And so I usually puff it out two, three times bigger than I think is actually possible as an exercise to expand the plasticity of my expectation. Yeah. And then, you know, so it's through this process of continually doing this exercise. So again, back to the structure for the listener, 10 minutes, pen and paper, write down what you want to have occur. And when you get done, throw it away and move on. Yeah. So That's do you it. write on a journal? Um, or do you write in paper that you throw away? What's your practice? I will write on the wall if that's what it takes. <laughs> it's that important. With a Sharpie. Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> so I like this going back a second too, because I think this is important. Our mind does have a tendency to say, you know, our, our inner critic has a tendency to doubt our thoughts, feelings, dreams, results, and outcomes that we want and wants us to play small. So we have to tell ourselves in the act of writing and visualizing that we can, right? And, and, and so what was the phrase that you said that we tell ourselves while we're writing that we would sort of rebuff this, this negative thought process that might chime in during our visualization process? Just challengers, just say, you know, hey, make this even better than you can imagine which is not easy. That sounds like pie in the sky. It sounds like, you know, kindergarten hoo-ha. It does not sound like an adult's real legit life. Um, but you, everybody's got to have a little hoo-ha. I mean, <laughs> come on. I mean, life is more fun with hoo-ha. So encourage yourself. And that's a better word than challenge. Encourage yourself to see it the way you really want it, even better than you can imagine. How good can you stand it? That's a phrase I, I love to give clients. How good can oh, you stand it? Oh, good. Can you stand it? I just have to repeat that for listeners. That is so on point. Go ahead. Well, we were taught, we, you know, you brought up a really good point about how we talk ourselves down, you know, and that is really one of the, one of the elements I write about in my upcoming book is uh, what I call small vision syndrome. Small vision syndrome happens by focusing consistently on your current life today and focusing on what you're afraid of, on what you don't want to have occur. You know, we've all had that where we wake up and we start, we realize we're thinking about the future and some horrible fantasy of what we think could happen. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden our energy is just depleted. And we wonder why we feel like our backs against the wall. As human beings, we are built because of our caveman cave person history we're, we're trying to protect ourselves keep ourselves alive so it's in our dna that we try to find something bad that's going to happen and avoid it or or stay away from it 
But in our modern day society, what has happened is we're so focused on all the stuff that could happen. We're just in a state of fight or flight. We're absolutely Mm -hmm. burnt out, just our circuits. So small vision syndrome is focusing too much on your life now and too much on your fears. And what happens is you start playing small. You don't think you can. And after a while, you get so caught up in the to-do list and the responsibilities, you don't think you have time for such a lofty question, such as what's your big thing or what's my dream or what do I really want to have happen today? So it's very important. And in, in the seven steps that I wrote out in this book are really um, to, to explode small vision syndrome and really draw out um, the power that is in every single person. Mm, drawing out the power that's in every single person. I mean, it just occurs to me, like, what would life be like if everybody wasn't focused on their to-do list and was doing this ideal day and focused on their big thing? I mean, I don't know, but the question would go to you. What do you think the world would be like? I tell you what I'm like, I'm an, I'm, I'm a jerk. <laughs> I tell you, never mind the world, me, when I'm focused on my to-do list and all the things I think need to get done and the fear associated with not getting it done, especially before the day. I mean, can't, can't we all relate to that? I, I just, yes. I get crispy. I get crispy. I get short. I get frustrated. I'm not the same daddy. I'm certainly not the same husband. And I'm most importantly, not good to myself. When I'm, you know, I criticize myself or I'm hard on myself or expect perfection when I get in that space. So, yeah. So yeah. When, you, when you're there, when you're feeling crispy, I love that word. Uh, how do you get yourself out of that space into the more of a visualization, dreamy, and, and to use your term, woo-ha, we all need a little more woo-ha space. We do. Yes. Well, what, what I, again, uh, uh, visualization is one of my go-tos. First thing I do is I shift my energy. I will take a run. I will do jumping jacks. I will take a cold shower. Um, I'll slap myself in the face, splash (laughs) cold water in my face. I'll do any, I'll jump in a, you know, a frozen lake. I've done that with clients. Um, So, you know, I'll do whatever it takes to shift the energy. That's the starter. And then I put my attention in the direction of both the outcome I want, but the feeling I want to have and the experience I want to have. So if I'm in a funk, First thing I do is shift the energy and the fastest way to do it is physically. I'll run a lap around the house. If you ever come by my home, if you see me running around the house, you know, I'm in a space. He's shifting his crispy energy. Exactly. Exactly. Crispy (laughs) only belongs on a chicken sandwich. That's the only place crispy belongs. Maybe a few other places. I love this. I love this. I I really like the slapping yourself across the face visual, but (laughs) listeners don't do that. Maybe jump in a cold bath. This is like Wim Hof 101, but I love this idea that we have the ability to shift our own energy, right? So we have agency and that's really what I preach to clients is that we have agency over our internal sort of landscape and well-being. We might not have it have, you know, total agency over what happens to us, but we certainly do have the way that we show up. Right? Good point. Well yeah. said, lady. Yep. So, I completely agree. <laughs> On that point, we're going to go to a quick break. So please audience hang tight with here with Jeff Patterson talking about visualization. And this is a completely riveting conversation. And I'm just cannot wait to talk more about the big thing, his new book, and all the ways that visualization can help and affect your lives. Stay tuned. Thanks, guys. Okay, now we're going to go to break. Do you have any questions for me while we're in break? No, but I, I want to, I heard a device somewhere. That That was not me. No, it was mine. It's mine. I mean, it's not, it's not Jeff. It's somebody in my house. So I got to find it. My kids must have had an iPad. Give me one second. Do I have like one minute? Yeah. We have tons of time. Sorry about that. There's no, there's no rush. I didn't hear it by the way. I don't know which one it was, but I took a bag. Technology out of the room. So sorry about that. Hope that didn't make a big ding on your end. 
Can you hear me? There we go. Sorry. Yes, I, I can. You did my microphone. Okay. So quick question. I did hear a couple of times that you froze. So I didn't know, do you have multiple wireless networks at your house? I'm on a direct line of ethernet. So okay, perfect. So I we're good. shouldn't. It, it, I, and it may not be, it may just be mine. It might be, it might've happened on the zoom, but not happened on the recording. We can edit around that. It's not a big deal. Okay. Well, let me know if you need to stop or anything like that. Oh, I will. I will. Um, yeah. It's amazing. This is such an amazing topic. And I'm just thinking of all the ways I can incorporate it into my own life. And I'm just, I'm like overjoyed. And I will let you know um, at the end for about four or five minutes, I'll give you a chance to tell people where they can find more about you. So your website, um, if they want to coach with you, whatever. So um, just know, just know that I will give you that space to plug yourself before we complete. Okay. Yeah. One question I, yeah. I was going to offer. I was just like, what could I give a value? Yeah. yeah. You know, um, if you're okay with this at the end, um, I can, th my book is not available for, for public use because I'm still editing, but I would give uh, this chapter where I talk a little bit about visualization. The book's not about visualization, but I do talk about it. I'll send them this sample chapter if they would like as my gift to them, if they would like it. That would be great. Um, but also give so, them a reason to reach out to you. Yeah. I'll give them my email and then they can ping me. And if they want it, I'll send it to them as a gift. And um, is that okay? Great. I love it. It's amazing. It's a great incentive for them to actually reach out to. So you may get some people. So that would be awesome. Um, I definitely think that people will want to know more because this idea is so, um, is so big, <laughs> pun intended, but it's also this, um, it, it can make, things happen for us. Um, mm. and it's, it's real. And I think that's like what people are looking for is these ways to shape their lives, um, that aren't overly complex. Right. Because we that's all right. think, you know, it's impossible for me to do X, Y, and Z, but it, you know, if we come to this idea that it isn't impossible for us and, and, and anything's, possible, we should, we should save this for the, for the second yeah. section, okay. because we'll it's very it. important what you're saying. I love yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to count back from five, five, four, three, two, and we are back. Thanks everyone for hanging in there. This is Habits for Happiness, a weekly radio show to talk about habits that can make you happier. And here today to talk about the habit of visualization is the amazing one and only Jeff Patterson. And Jeff and I were just briefly chatting during the break about the idea of this big idea of visualization and how most people, and this is an assumption of mine, but I can use my clients as a barometer, you know, don't believe that what they envision can become a reality. And that's why this specific habit, I believe has so much power. So what would you say to the naysayers out there, Jeff? I wouldn't say anything. I mean, you know, I, I would let the naysayers have their say because I was a naysayer, you know, you, you never really adopt something unless it works. And for me, this has worked. I mean, I've been through a lot. Everybody listening has been through a lot. When you've got something that has pulled you through the dark ages and the dark times of, of you know, a lot in life, you don't need anybody to agree with you. And I think that's why I feel so compelled right now coming out of COVID to share this particular message. Mm. You see, I believe so many people are trying to whip up their confidence like froth on a latte, trying to build up this excitement to go do what they want to do. To me, I think that is such a waste of energy. Mm. I believe that in ev every single one of us is an un- bridled, powerful, infinite being. And our work is to get out of the way, to let that shine, to let that unleash. So for me, I'm always looking for tools and techniques. And most of mine have been forged, you know, with hard knocks in business, in, in places where the stakes are high and, you know, there's a long way to fall. And I've taken some hard knocks but I want tools that are going to unlock me. They're going to bring out the innate greatness in me. And that's what I do with clients. I don't want to add anything to them because they don't need anything. You know, they need to have less, less 
being in their head, less uh, inhibition, less second guessing. So this idea of visualization for me is, is, is something that you just direct your attention in a direction. And it's not easy for everyone, but if you do it, you'll feel something. And that is going to make a shift in you. And in time done, you know, as a habit, that will make a huge shift. It has absolutely changed my life. And it has absolutely changed the lives of countless people that I've worked with, but and plenty of people that I've never known. But this idea that it's in us and that we can unlock it is what is so compelling to me because that is what I think is, is kind of missing. Yeah, missing from? Well, missing from you know, a lot of the common, the conversation out in the world with coaching and with, um, you know, improving your life, et cetera. I think, I think it's so easy for us to, to be hard on ourselves for not doing it right. Or, you know, it can become another doing, it can become another thing that we have to be perfect at. And when a person knows that everything they need is in them, and it's about unlocking it and unleashing it, you know, they realize that, oh, it's, it's not about being perfect. I don't need to learn all this stuff before I can really unlock my life. You can unlock today in an instant. And, and that's, that's what is true in my world. That's what I see, you know, every single day. But that's not what I see being taught out there as a general rule. And um, it doesn't mean that everything else isn't really valid, but this is so immediate and so real that um, when people taste it, it's, yeah, I have the chills. I just to tell you that just when you say this idea of that we can unlock, yeah, that we can unlock our own potential. It's just, it's it's sort of mind blowing, which is sort of leads to my next question. And you said this idea of not living in our heads. So, if we're not living in our heads, where are we living? In our hearts, you know. That's to me is one of two places. Um, you know, th- this isn't directly answering that, but I, for me, I'm going to reflect what I value most or where I place my attention the most. You know, my identity will reflect where I'm focused. So if I'm focused on my education, you know, and my credentials and all of that, you know, that will, you'll, you'll, you'll see that. You could probably see that in my way of being, how I operate. Mm -hmm. Um, I could also conversely focus on my failures and things that I think that I haven't done well. And, and we've all done that and we know how it feels. And when we show up in the world on that, that reflects. And so I think every one of us has some kind of set point, a place where we rest our attention the most and identify with most. For me, that's why I really cultivate my spiritual, but really energetic practice of my energetic state of being, because if I'm focused on that, to me, that's our power center. That's the thing Mm -hmm. that is infinite. It's bigger than our minds. It's bigger than our education. It's bigger than our. And if you focus on that, that's going to be the trends and the odds. And so that's, that's just one part that I think um, really helps you to unlock a part of us that most of us don't know a lot about or a little intimidated by, and it gets politicized or, it gets religionized too. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I am a, I'm all fine for religion and all spiritual studies, but what I'm talking about is distinct from that. It's really the energy um, feeling of expansion and power that you feel from within that cannot be denied. And when it is unlocked, you're a completely different person. And the way you show up in the office or you know, at home with your family or your loved ones is completely different. Unlocking totally. that is everything. Yeah, we all know, and I would I would use you as an example. We all know someone to to make this relative for listeners who walks into a room and has just big, powerful energy, right? So we know what it's like to experience that in other people, right? They might not even say a word, but when they're in the room, we know it, right? So yeah. it's this idea that it's not even verbal. It's it's like a the field that we put out. Um, and it's, it is undeniable and scientific that we are energetic forces that live, you know, in skin and bones. And so it is so important for us to manage our energy. And so when you, before you do visualization, I know one way to manage my energy is to get grounded. Do you do a grounding practice? I do, but most, I mean, 
for me personally, I live by the river. I cold plunge often. I walk barefoot out in the yard. Um, and I little kids, nothing all around you, like two little girls. You know what I mean? They keep you like, you may, you might get up in your head, but they will pull you back down. In heart, totally. You know That's infectious about. energy. So, right? Yes. Well, in, in its best form, infection for sure, for sure. Um, so that's, I think a great, a definite great idea to ground into your body for sure. I think that's why I like the visualization so much, because to me, again, I can only speak for myself. That's what really catalyzes that big, powerful energy in me. When I see an outcome, it's different than thinking about it. Mm -hmm. If I think about it, my mind will go, I can't do that. I can't do that. And I have a conversation and now I'm not in it. If I visualize, if I see it, my, my imagination doesn't know the difference. My, my brain doesn't know the difference between imagination and reality. It's just, it's an image. So if I can see it long enough, you'll wear down your resistance. You just beat it down through repetition. If, if you keep seeing, it's like if you keep seeing yourself succeeding at something, even if you doubt it, if you keep at it and you keep seeing it, eventually you'll, over, you'll, you'll override it. Yeah. So, you know, I, yeah. I mean, I love this idea of um, just continually showing up for your, your desired outcome. Right. And so, you know, something I see, I work with a lot of business folks and I was an entrepreneur in my own life prior to being a coach. And this idea that the, that I see often is that the constant thread between those that are successful in their, in their ability to have results, isn't necessarily that they have lots of wins. It's that, that they don't, they, they, they continue on the path, right? They don't give up on the path. There's, a, there's an innate belief that they will get from A to B. And so they, they're quite undeterred. Um, and that's, that's this ability that I want to talk a little bit about time, because I have this, this paradigm theory that I propose to the universe that most of us are, 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 our expectations aren't met in result to what we want in the time that we want it. And it might just be that it's not right, right for us right now. It's not a no necessarily from, from the universe or whatever. And so I want to talk about this idea of having patience for the results that you want, um, if you could speak a little bit more about that, so that obviously what we visualize doesn't always happen the same day, right? So, yeah. so what's well, that relationship with time? Well, I'm going to, I'm going to approach this from a couple angles with okay. your permission. Yes, go for it. I, I'm so, so intrigued because I'm very impatient. So I, this is a personal question. <laughs> I can relate. I can yeah. relate to that lady. I mean, uh, by nature, I'd say I'm pretty impatient or have been in the past pretty impatient. Um, well, there's there's two things happening with vision. Things happening when you visualize. Okay, most importantly is what's happening in you in your physiological state. Okay, when you see yourself holding your baby's hands in your hand, let's say you're pregnant and you're you know going through the throes. That's probably, I'm a man. I should not be talking about pregnancy, but I'm going to carry it through just for the sake of <laughs> Let's go. We it, started. So. <laughs> right? Um, but it's like feeling your baby's hands and imagining them healthy and out of the womb and you feeling healthy and energized. You know, you're going to feel better thinking that than if you're just focusing on the discomfort and, you know, the fact that you can't sleep anymore laying in your bed. So, so the, the real, one of the real keys to visualizing is just the feeling that elevates inside of you. If that's all you did it for, A plus, 10 out of 10, good job. Because most of us just need to elevate. Most of us are stuck in a pattern of thought because of our uh, state that we're in. So if you raise the state, which is what I utilize visualization for, when you raise the state, now what you see is different. Yeah, well, you're, you're looking at it from, it's like walking up a ladder. You're looking at right. it from a different altitude. Yes, yes. So that's the first thing to remember. Don't just do it to make the thing happen. Do it to feel better. Even a micron, even one little decibel in the mm -hmm. upward you know, category is great. So focus on the inner feeling of elevating. And then, um, then in terms of the patience, okay. So for me, most people are trying to create the belief that they can do it. Mm. I think that is an absolute waste of time. To me, it is 
one of the big issues in the coaching industry today because it's not necessary to believe you can do. Whoever said you have to believe that you can run a marathon to run a marathon? Do I have to believe I can win a championship before I win a championship? No, I, I would say no, choose it. Mm -hmm. I Choose to win a championship. Choosing is more powerful than believing. Oh, I have now, the chills. I love this idea. It's this idea that we had Todd Musselman on last week. Um, and he talked about this idea of, of being um, interested or committed. So to me, the idea of being committed is also the idea of choosing, right? Yes, it is totally. Choosing, you know, I believe I can do it. I think I can do it. I believe I can do it. That is just like amateur hour. So let's just set that over here. And I'm, I'm being silly for a No, second, I love it. Okay? I think it's amazing and so counterintuitive to what we're taught, right? We're taught it this is. sort of, we're taught this like little engine that could paradigm that yes. if we if we believe we can, we can, right? So it's this idea of being committed and choosing to do it. You choose to, I'm choosing that I do it. Now that is not a guarantee. There are no guarantees in life. There's no guarantee I make it to the top of the mountain. All I have control over is to get to the top of the mountain but mm -hmm. most people when they get up and they get the altitude sickness using the metaphor of climbing of course once they feel the altitude sickness they're like oh no is this bad maybe i won't make it am i going to make it and now they're not committed they're in a state of not committed mm -hmm. and so this is what happens to all of us along the way whether you know you're a ceo or you're a stay-at-home mom or you're a professional swimmer or a hollywood act doesn't matter all the same you're either in on the outcome or you're locked in on it not happening. And most people are dealing with that issue, plain and simple. And so we make it so much more difficult than it really is. And so choosing it um, will help you on that front. And then in terms of patience, there's a phrase I like to use. I didn't create it, but I don't know the first place I heard it. One of the places I heard it's where I got my master's in psychology at the University of Santa Monica. Uh, where Ron and Mary Holnick, the directors of that program, said, um, it's this or something better for the highest good. Mm, I love that. Can I just repeat that for listeners? Yeah. It's this or something better for the higher good. It's this or something better for the higher good. And what that means to me when I'm visualizing either a small thing or a huge thing is the mind's going to go, wait a minute, is this possible? What if this isn't really the right thing for me? What if something better is seeking to emerge, but I work on this thing that's not really the mm -hmm. thing, right? The mind will just do all of this stuff. And that's the great out is to say, it's this or something better for the mm -hmm. highest good. I don't need to white knuckle this. I'm going to trust that the thing that I'm focusing on is great. It's for my highest good. It's the best. But if, it's, if there's something better out there, so be yeah. It. And that's also that. putting your trust, would you agree, in something greater than yourself? Well, that's what it is for me, you know? Right. Yeah, for sure. And I'm yeah. not saying it's God. I mean, that can be the trees outside or that there's greater forces at work, but that you aren't alone in your pursuit of um, your yes. big thing. Absolutely. I mean, that, that is definitely how I see it. But you know, what's so fascinating to me is there's so much about us, our minds and our spirit that is beyond our comprehension that we don't know. There's so mm -hmm. much we don't know that, you know, I'm just always open to other incredible things happening, even within our facility, our faculty as, as human beings that we may not even know that might be happening. So um, yes to uh, the creative force and energy outside of us. And there's power inside of us and around us which I would consider kind of one and the same, but there's power in us that's so much greater than we ever comprehend. And I never want to discount that either. Wow, that's amazing. So um, just for listeners, can you give us, how can they find you? So if someone's like, this Jeff Patterson guy is amazing. I think you're so amazing. And I know you're changing lives every single day. How do they get in touch with you? Oh, you're so sweet to, to say that. Um, I only speak the truth. <laughs> That's right. Simple, right? Simple things. Um, well, you can find me on my website, aspensuccesscoaching.com. You won't find me. You'll find a picture of me and um, <laughs> some very quickly written words um, on, on the page. I, I have a website there. Um, my book will be coming out. It's set for March, and that will be a, a way that you'll be able to 
see me. And also, if you'll get a pen and paper at the end of our little interview here, I'll, I'll give a little special offer for people, maybe send you something if you would like it on this subject of visualization. But the best way to reach me is um, on my website and my, my email address, which is also jeff at aspensuccesscoaching.com. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I definitely wanted to throw that out before we complete. And when your book comes out, will it be available on Amazon? How can people find it? Yes, it'll be everywhere. Um, well, anywhere I can get it, let's say. So if you own a bookstore, <laughs> let me know. I'm happy to send you some books. <laughs> For all those bookstore people out there. And we'll That's definitely right. rerun the episode in March so that we can um, get a second you know, bite of the apple then or have you back on That's, um, that's and great. talk about it. And so for those people, I just want to sort of wrap up with this kind of question. For those people that are feeling like they haven't yet unlocked their power and they have a big thing inside of them, you know, what habit, or if, if there's one besides visualization, like where do they start and where, where do they start looking for the keys? Cause I think that's, a, that's this idea that keeps coming up is that we, some of us have this awareness hell, right? We have the awareness that we might have this ability to create major change in the world or in our own lives or live outside our comfort zone or whatever, but we just don't know how to get started, right? Like we just, we don't know where the keys are for the unlocking. What would you say to those people? Well, I would say, first of all, everyone has in them a big thing. And that big mm -hmm. thing may not necessarily be to become the next Steve Jobs or Misty Copeland or you know Sarah Blakely. It may be to do the thing in your heart deep down you want to do, which may lead to the next thing. You know, it's important not to discount your true authentic desires. So, you know there's greatness in you and it's seeking to get out. And it's not only a doing and a, you know, getting and creating, but it's also who you want to be mm. and start by knowing it's in there. You know, you are more than you think you are. That's the, you know, one of the first principles of the seven keys of unlocking your big thing and doing it. Number one, know you're more than you think there. Not only is there greatness in you, you are an infinite, powerful presence and you're pretending to be this little human. Starting there, knowing that you're more than you think is, I think, a, a great first step. Um, and then in terms of a tool, I think we keep it simple today and use visualization. Mm. And you use simply my ideal day, whatever you would like to have occur. See that and imagine the best unfolding and notice how good that feels, even if it's a little bit. And take the good feeling and then leave and live your day with it. That in and of itself is so powerful. And if you keep doing it over and over and over, you're going to get better at it. And that focus is going to expand, you know, your focus with your reticular activating system. It's going to bring things to you. <clears throat> and I want to say one thing about visualization. Mm -hmm. Visualization for me is not something to just do and then hope everything falls in your lap. I told that story earlier about the, mm -hmm. the ski trip. That's a, just a blatant example of what can happen. But what it does is, is it elevates your state so that you can carry through the actions that need to be taken and you will be inspired. You will think of strategies. I can't tell you how many times I've sat with somebody who was doing something and they had no clue as to what was going to work. And through the elevation of their state, the idea came and it absolutely changed the game. That's what happens by elevating your state. And that's why I think visualization is so powerful. And in the book, I call it future visioning. I think it's a nice, it's what I've always called it, future visioning. You're seeing mm. the future you desire, but you're not seeing it out there. You're seeing it now as if it's happening. It's a creative exercise. It should be fun. And it's just designed to help you feel a little bit letter, better. And if you do it over time, it will help you to focus your thought and to create the things that you never dreamed possible. Yeah. And so in, could this be used for specific um, events? So, you know, it comes, comes up for me that, you know, um, a lot of, uh, you know, people that are athletes or, you know, on Absolutely. the world stage have yes. uh, used what I would call mental rehearsal, which would be future visioning to, you know, rehearse the, the, the theater performance or the ski, ski run or whatever yes. it is to, and so is that, that's an application, correct? Definitely. You can use it for specifics or general but when you're creating the, the, you know, your vision for 2022, you're coming into mm. the new year, start, you know, when you get clear on some of those things that you want to have, em envision it, imagine it, see it, and, and utilize all of your senses, see it, smell it, taste it, feel it. 
that's what really makes it come alive. And it helps to be, you know, prompted by someone. It helps to be kind of led a little bit like this. It's like a great improvisation, you know, yeah. on stage. You get yeah. a little idea, then you take it a little further, and then you puff it up, and then you take it a little bit further. So very similar. And your mind, again, it's a creative exercise. You're using your imagination. This stuff doesn't exist yet. It doesn't exist, but that's what a writer does in front of a book. Right. You know, you're creating it. And that's when people say we're co-creators, that's it. You're authoring your life. You're creating it through your uh, imagination. And I, and it's interesting because, you know, when we get creative, even though we're using, you know, we can argue the right side of our brain or whatnot, we are leaving sort of the prefrontal cortex of rumination and all these things and leaving Mm -hmm. our amygdala dove, you know, fight or flight. And we're going into a real heart space. And then when you talk about the senses, we're going into almost a body space. So it's an exercise that also, if you agree, would get us out of our heads and into our hearts. That's the number one reason I do it. I mean, definitely. That's one definite way to get out of your head is to get in just as you said. And your imagination is such a powerful tool. Most of us haven't harnessed it. Um, Probably because I spent quite a bit of time in Hollywood, I learned, and as a kid, learned how to utilize it in a way that really helps you to create your life. And that's where it really counts. You know, yeah, that's where everything counts. You know, one of the things that that comes up for me right now is that most all of my clients are quite homesick for their childlike self, right? Their childlike self that has this sort of dreams of wonder. And so, you know, children are a great example for us of visualization. You know, they all have, you know, my kids often talk, I have a nine and 11 year old, what they want to be when they grow up. And, you know, it's pretty unbridled. I mean, they don't say, Mm -hmm. well, that's not possible. (laughs) Uh, One wants to work for NASA and the other wants to be an actress. And they they definitely believe it's possible. And and they've chosen these, at least for now, these paths. So so could we say that part of this exercise is getting back to that childlike wonder self where we believe totally in our own imagination, right? It's not magical thinking, right? It's It's more- It's not, no, I think that's definitely innately in all of us, as you said, that childlike wonder and um, it's having the courage. It takes courage to be that creative and playful again. And again, so, so many of the people that I coach, they're people who are at the top of their game or they've, you know, undisputed best in the world. How do you take, how do you go to a new level when you're like that? This is how. But most people have a death grip on the current situation because it took them everything to get there and they're at the top. So it's difficult to let go now and to, to see the next thing and give yourself permission. And, and that where, you know, those transitions are very delicate, but they're so powerful because there's so much unexpressed power in those individuals and as, as successful and powerful or, and, and just wonderful as they've been, they're not even scratching the surface. And that's true for every one of us. It doesn't matter where you are in your life journey, in business or finances. It doesn't matter. You are scratching the frigging surface. If you take one thing from this conversation, just take this. You are scratching this. You have you you can't even fathom what's possible. Now, am I saying that you're meant to play in the NBA if you're <laughs> 66 and you're six foot or five foot? You know, no, I'm not saying that you can do anything but anything is possible Mm. and we are maybe we're not all meant you know to do what everybody else is doing like not everybody wants to be ceo not everybody wants to be a hollywood celebrity not everybody wants to be a doctor do the thing in your heart screaming to do and most of us don't slow down to listen to it and that's also one of the motivator killers for most people is they're not listening to that and they've they've got to unearth that pull that out. And that will also help to unlock that, you know, incredibly powerful person in there. Oh, well, we're going to complete on that note, but I do want you to get your offer in to listeners before we go. So please let them know what they can get if they reach out to you. Yes. So my book is not complete, but it's getting close. And I'd like to send you a sample chapter on this subject here that I talk about visualization. It's also about clarifying your big thing, which I think some of your listeners may really enjoy. And I'll start with you is my gift, no cost. Um, so go ahead and write down my email, which is Jeff, J-E-F-F at AspenSuccessCoaching.com. If you'll send me an email and just 
say, hey, I'd love to get that sample chapter or just put sample chapter in the, in the subject line. I will send that to you. It is not for public sharing, just FYI. It's just meant for you because I'm still editing it. It's probably going to be changing a little bit, but there's some powerful stuff in there. I'd love you to have it. Oh, awesome. Thank you, Jeff. And everyone, Jeff at AspenSuccessCoaching.com. We've reached the end of the show, but we will continue the conversation at, at Habits for Happiness, um, our Facebook group. And remember, everyone, the road to happiness is paved with healthy habits. See you next week. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you, lady. Thanks, Jeff.